Hello and welcome to the Ideas Research Highlights. Very pleased to say that we have Pauline Shielbeek with us. And many of you know Pauline, she's worked uh, closely with Zenny Hill on, the qualitative, on some qualitative questions for the Ideas Project. And Pauline's been out to Ethiopia and to Nigeria doing her qualitative work. Some of you may have read her blog before, before she went out. And now we're here to hear about how the, um, the qualitative work went. So welcome. So to start off with, um, Pauline, maybe you could tell us what your research question was. So we're looking mainly um, at what are these, uh, these mechanisms? Can we get a thorough understanding of what drives people uh, to indeed follow advice from, for example, a community health worker, or what stops them from doing it? And, and who are the other influences, maybe family members, uh, traditional leaders, or does it have a lot to do with the characteristics of the mother herself, for example? Mm -hmm. We hear that you developed some of your own data collection methods. Could you tell us a little bit about how they improved the, the traditional methods and what the methods were? Yeah, of course. Um, so what is a difficulty uh, when you study behaviours is if you ask someone uh, why did you perform this, uh, this certain behaviour, uh, it might be difficult for them to answer that question because first of all they might not know why they're doing it, it might be a habit, so uh, they, mi they might not have thought about the underlying reasons of performing that uh, specific behaviour. But also they might be a little bit embarrassed they, uh, that they're actually probably not doing the right thing or what they think you, you might consider as the, as the right thing. Uh, and, and sometimes also they give you an answer that actually is quite a shallow answer and might be deepened out a, a little bit more. So the methods that we, um, uh, we used uh, were trying to overcome these, these problems. And uh, they ranged from methods such as uh, different kind of interview types. So we, for example, used um, uh, the so-called friendship pair interview. Uh, so a mother, maybe a, a bit more shy mother, would then invite her friend to come and sit with her so she would feel a bit more comfortable. And we thought that that would overcome maybe the first shyness uh, and would trigger a bit more elaborated answers uh, from the mother. Um, so that, that, was, that was an example of a type of, of interview that we used. But also within the interviews and the focus group discussions, uh, we used different uh, types of questions to, for example, overcome uh, social desirability. So the desire of people to, uh, to give answers that they think you, you want to hear. And an example that I can give there is that we used the so-called Q statements. Uh, and this is that the interviewer uh, reads out a statement, uh, which is often uh, quite a controversial uh, statement and, and might trigger immediate response by the uh, uh, participants. And in that way, they're actually not really thinking, oh, that question, she might want to hear this. So they're giving their gut reaction. And we thought that that uh, partly would overcome uh, some of the social desirability in the answer of the uh, participants. Mm -hmm. And then the last type of methods, we try to uh, really uh, tackle that problem that, that sometimes you give an answer but that actually isn't really the underlying reason of why people are doing uh, behaviour. They might think so, but if, if you trigger them a little bit more, they come with reasons for that reason and reasons for the reason of the reason. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, an example for that is that we use the so-called uh, root, co uh, root cause analysis. Um, so we, we were drawing a tree, uh, or actually the roots of a tree, and the main problem would be the trunk of the, um, of the tree. And then we asked them, okay, so sometimes people can't be visited uh, after they've delivered uh, their baby by the health extension worker. What could be reasons? And they said, oh, because the health extension worker um, uh, doesn't want to come, or oh, it's because... Um, she hasn't he heard about it or um, and then we say oh why why does the health extension worker not want to come then and and then they say oh well because she's very busy uh, we live very far away or why hasn't she heard about it well it's because I didn't deliver in the facility and and I'm a bit um, uh, afraid to tell her she might she might get angry so slowly you kind of uh, get to the uh, root of it because obviously the the next question we can ask then is, is what so why did you not deliver in the facility where there are particular reasons for that so slowly then we kind of unravel the whole um, uh, yeah root cause mm. really of the of the problem that was proposed at the beginning mm. and do you think your methods were effective 
Um, the participants for so far, I know we're still like in the, in the middle of doing the analysis, but the participants really liked uh, the, the methods. And for us, it was uh, uh, quite interesting to, to actually try these out because when we were looking for the methods, we didn't only take it from health uh, sciences, but um, uh, we looked at other areas as well where they uh, study behavior, for, uh, for example, behavioral economics, uh, where they're also very interested in... Um, in looking what what do people decide, what triggers their their behavior, but even in criminology, where they also, of course, study behavior. So uh, the methods that we used or developed were kind of a, a mix of uh, of uh, methods that we found in the literature, uh, which we adopted a little bit to like a, a lower income uh, setting. And uh, as far as I know, some of them were were uh, for the first time used in in these kind of settings and. Um, yeah, so we still we will still do like an overall evaluation of of how everything went and uh, what kind of responses we got for each of the questions, what the advantages and disadvantages were. Um, but but at least it, um, what I know from the participants is that they really liked it mm -hmm. and um, and that they were quite engaged with uh, sorting some pictures, drawing on trees, uh, etc. So hopefully um, that would be at least one of the advantages. Um, uh, that engaged the participants very much. So you're going to write up the methods and that will be eventually, when it's published, those, that will be available for readers? Yes, yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, uh, so we will have uh, quite a few articles, but two of them will be obviously the outcomes of the study. Mm -hmm. So what, what were the triggers, what, what were the mechanisms and the contextual factors uh, that influenced behaviour? And then a second paper will be, so how did those methods help us getting, getting that thorough understanding of behaviour change and behaviour change mechanisms in um, quite diverse settings mm -hmm. such as Ethiopia and, uh, and Nigeria. Thank you and thank you for listening and um, if there's any other part of Ideas work that you'd like to hear more about please let us know.